Hey there, you two. I heard you both introduce yourselves to the Empress. Good job. Oh, it's Rectorin. It's Rector. Perhaps you should consider teaching your students basic management speaking with nobility. When she began casually discussing her past grievances with a member of the Imperial family, my breath caught in my throat. Oh, yeah? I'm sure you weren't just choking on your words again. <laughs> There's no need to bring that up again. <laughs> These two make quite a pair. Indeed. Still, I want to see this sword tournament that Le Guin was talking about. For real. I am Patrick Himes, third son of the Himes house. I'm ashamed I haven't introduced myself introduced myself to you before now, sir. There's no need to be so formal, Patrick. Besides, it's a bit rare I'm even in Ergonia, so I'm partly to blame. <laughs> I've heard you're quite the traveler. Speaking of, Mr. Worzel here tells me you visit Nord quite often. That's right, nearly every year. By this point, he's pretty much like one of the family. Just can't get enough of those beautiful expanses of land up there. On top of that, the clean air does these old bones good. Yeah, Nord is absolutely gorgeous. I had a cabin built by the lake a few years back. It's such a tranquil place. The town's lovely. She always told me about the time you spent there, but I've never been. Oh, it's truly stupendous. The endless stretches of land, the free-flowing breeze. Not to mention the kind and hospitable people. When I'm in Nord, it's like all the troubles of the world weighing on my mind blow away with the wind. My, hearing all that makes me more intrigued than ever. Honestly, I've felt fairly troubled myself lately. Well, it was plain to see you had a lot to deal with back in Nordis. You should come visit sometime. If our schedule's lined up, I'll show you around. I appreciate that offer. Oh, and Warzel, I'd like to take this chance to apologize for saying such an awful thing about you back when we were students. Hmm? Oh, I've completely forgotten. Ha! <laughs> it's fine. I knew at the time you weren't thinking clearly. I appreciate the apology, though. Thank you. Oh, hello. When did you show up? About halfway through. <laughs> so casual, I love it. <clears throat> Youth is truly a wonderful thing. Yeah, guys, Patrick, I'm happy for you both. Alright, so now I'm circling back around to where I first started. So now the boys should be over here. Yep, there they are. And it seems both the main and branch canvases have some promising young cadets this year. In fact, if you two were headed to the army after you graduated, I'd gladly welcome you to the 4th Armored Division. It's an honor to hear that from Craig the Red himself, but I prefer to stay as His Highness Cedric's side whenever possible. Sounds like you just got shot down, old man. <laughs> so it seems. How about you then? You gotta join the fourth? Sorry, but I'm not into hanging out with a bunch of muscle heads. But if you got a ton of cuties like the Icy Maiden, maybe I'll think about it. Well, I wouldn't say tons, but we've got a few. Just between you and me, though. Simply being a part of the fourth is enough to send ladies swooning into the streets as you pass. Whether you end, whether you use this little perk to your own end is entirely up to you. So seriously? All right, now we're talking, old man. Hey, eyebrows. That all it takes to tear you away from your beloved prince? <laughs> Maybe that's hope for you after all. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean by that? I'm still loyal to the prince. Oh, and don't call me eyebrows. <laughs> Seems like this is a rowdy group. Yet, yeah, somehow, uh, it does kind of fit, you know, fit, fit. It does kind of fit, honestly. Not gonna lie. And there's one, one more, two more. So you learned sword, play from your my brother then. Yes, though before that, Lighter taught me some basics. But since his style is, shall we say, highly improvisationalized, improvisational, impro improvisational, I consider Lord Roof is my true teacher. That said, he only trained me for a short while when I was still living here in Heimdall. You only received a small amount of training and you become this strong? I'm impressed. I've heard Governor General Rufus's court fencing skills are second to none. So I'm sure his lessons were very thorough. They are indeed. My brother started teaching me when I was ten. I've been training since then in the hopes of surpassing him. I can, I can only wonder how strong, how close I've gotten. Perhaps you'll have the opportunity to find out before too long. What about you, Kurt? What do you plan? 
when are you planning to be able to surpass your father and brother? <laughs> I'm sure you know just as well as I do, but they're on such a different level from normal people, it's almost inhuman. My father is starting to feel his age, but it's said he's still nearly as strong as a Radiant Blade Master. I'd have to spend decades trying to even reach them, much less surpass them. Hmm, the Thunder God. I doubt even my brother could prove a match for him. If there was anyone in Erebonia who would prove a match, it would likely be the Rakshasa. Well, perhaps. <laughs> Looks like this conversation is starting to heat up. Busted. Oh, Instructor Reen. You come at a perfect time. Join us, Instructor. You were just discussing swordplay. Come and join us as a disciple of the Eight Leaves. Well, if you insist. I guess when we get enough Erebonian men in one place, it's only a matter of time before we start talking swords. <laughs> It does seem to run with run is part of, part of the course. So the group enjoyed a spirited discussion about sword styles, both from within the Empire and without. <clears throat> oh, Reen, a moment if you would. I'd like to thank you. I heard you agreed to share Al Alfin's first dance tonight. I'm sure she'd be just beside herself with happiness. Oh, hold on a second. I thought she was kidding about that. Given the uh, current atmosphere, I don't really think I can accept. Oh, is that so? It seems to me these rumors have been spreading like wildfire lately. May more be more than just talk. But I think the Ashen Chevalier is more than qualified to be a partner for my sister. Perhaps even beyond tonight's dances, if you know what I mean. Whoa, whoa. Settle down there, matchmaker. No, no, I mean, I'm nowhere near qualified for that. Well, unfortunately for you, Alphans' first dance is a part of tonight's schedule. There's already someone you're planning to have a future with, and that's that, I suppose. But would you dance with her tonight regardless? Think of it as a favor. Not for my sister, but for the entire Imperial family. <laughs> Damn, cornered! <sighs> Cedric's... Yeah, I can definitely see Cedric's been learning politics from Osborne, because that was top-notch. There is still plenty of time before the dance. Do think it over. Oh, I wouldn't expect expected Muse to be talking with these two. Chairman, Arena, Major Claire, and Muse. Three make an interesting group. That's what I'm saying, right? Thought I might use this opportunity to scout some promising talent. The IC Maiden here oversees logistics for the entire Empire's railroad system. Were you to join RF, I would ensure you immediately placed in a position worthy of your talents. I'm flattered, but I think military logistics and business logistics may be a bit too different. Oh, I don't know about that. In both warfare and business, you need to efficiently allocate limited personnel and resources. I'm sure Major Claire would make a wonderful businesswoman. An excellent analysis. Musa Egret. That's a potential and the reports you submitted about the art rifle and the kestrel. If you can't decide what to do after you graduate, I'll have a spot waiting for you at Ryanford too. For that matter, the RP would welcome your talents as well. I'm sure you may have some concerns regarding your house, but I'm sure I can be of help. <laughs> Why, thank you. I'm flattered. <laughs> Chairman Arena and Major Claire are always ready to scout new hire. Do these two have some ulterior motive, or am I just overthinking it? Well, given the, those two, it wouldn't surprise me. This is the last place I'd expect to do scouting or be scouted. <laughs> I must admit, I did get a little territorial when she tried to headhunt Muse. I can't blame Chairman Arena for being interested. You're both great additions to any team. Absolutely. By the way, Schwarzer, you'd be a welcome addition to our company yourself. Join us, and I'll make you lead pilot and head of the Pandora Solat Division. I appreciate the offer, but I'm happy being a teacher for now. By the no, it's not. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's quite fun fantasizing about what to do after I graduate. You don't need to worry too much about it now, but it's something you'll need to decide eventually. Honestly, Amuse, I think you're capable of doing anything you put your mind to. <laughs> you may be overestimating me just a smidgen. Have I talked to everybody? Hmm. I 
guess the competition's over. Maybe it's my turn. Let's find out. Nope, too late. There are even more people now. Should wait it out a bit longer. Oh yeah, how'd it go? Wow, so that was when you and Brigadier General Bardius first met. I'm sure your little duel ended up wrecking everything around you for a whole selge. <laughs> well, duels are an excellent way to deepen one's bond. <laughs> That's true, isn't it, V? Now that you mention it, I guess so, yeah. Well, considering that's how they were able to bury the hatchet. Yeah. Taking a trip down memory lane, I see. Yes, we were listening to Countess Laguin's tales from when she was a student. After the school year began, she took control of the fencing club and declared war on all the other clubs. And what am I surprised for? That's definitely right down her lane. She beat the swimming club in a swimming race, the chess club at chess. Any club that lost to her had to join the fencing club. Finally, she challenged Brigadier General Bardius, the president of the riding club, to a jousting match. I've heard bits and pieces of the story before, but there are so many things wrong with that story. The match went on for two hours without a winner. Finally, ended up in a draw when we each knocked each other off our horses simultaneously. Yeah, that sounds about right. Bardius is a master horseman. It was at the moment when Wallace became an important person to me. Oh, and she fell for him. He's my right hand and my comrade, a rival and a partner. As a fellow swordsman, I'm jealous of you. Having someone like that would be incredible. Someone who's a nemesis, but also a friend. I think I get it. Since we have the chance, I'd like to hear your stories too. I wondered about Laura, but I'm sure your history is just as fascinating. Have you by any chance met the leader of the Red Constellation? Perhaps the War God? Or maybe an s rank Bracer? I've seen the War God successor, but I haven't met any S rank, brace, S rank bracers yet. Well, it's understandable. There are only a small handful of them on the entire continent, after all. They're really getting into the conversation now. I should be surprised that Aurelia already knew Laura. I think she'll get along great with Fee, too. Hello there, Marquis. It's been a while, hasn't it? A little over a year, if I remember right. Oh, yes. We last spoke when the province was having those flooding issues. The dam you oversaw construction of has been working excellently. It's already gone a long way toward improving the livelihood of our local farmers. I'm glad to hear it. It's a good thing we were able to proceed with the project free of my team and daughter's influence. <laughs> oh, it's funny because it's true. I'm my master, Gwen. No, Irina's a total... Yeah, she is ruthless. Well, the chairman has been a great help to us, too, in her own way. Ah, you must be Sharon. I hear your efforts were indisposable in helping us expand St. Arc's Airport. Celestine was truly grateful for the assistance. Oh, I was only working in the chairman room instead. Besides, Mr. Celestine's finesse in getting permission from the railways was just as important. Well, that reminds me, didn't you work with Celestine at the main campus last year? <laughs> a super butler and a super maid working shoulder to shoulder? And maybe the two of them pressed more than that together? Well, he's 30 years old now, and like a son to me. I'd be happy to discuss arrangements between the two. Oh my, no. It would be too great an honor for me. <laughs> well, they're having fun. I'm surprised by how many people the Reinfords know. You shouldn't be. They're major... They're, in terms of business, they're a superpower. What do you expect? Yeah, given how big the company is, see? Exactly. Ah, oh, Rain, it's good to see you again. I hear you've been working more miraculous in the other provinces, just as you did in Sutherland. It wasn't just me, I had help from a huge number of people. I saw you speaking with the Emperor and the Chancellor earlier. Ah, oh, yes. I saw General Le Guin and Brigadier General Bardius heading to present themselves. I couldn't help but be nosy as and go stand with them. I wouldn't call it nosiness. You have a genuine concern for others. That's what we need in times like these. By the way, is in here with you? Ah, oh, he's with my oldest son at the party City Hall is hosting. <clears throat> I hope he's been helpful to those of you at the branch campus. Helpful? If I started a list off everything he's done for us, we'd be here all night. That is true. And Sharon also fits that description. 
But that's neither here nor there. Oh. Prince Cedric has been far too long. You're right. It has been a few years, hasn't it, Patrick? And you're Ash, right? I think this is the first time we've spoken one-on-one -on -one like this. Yeah, I guess so. We had our problems, but I can't say I don't like your style. Every time I run into you, you say some shit that stirs people up. <laughs> My word, have you forgotten this is the Crown Prince? Show him some respect. He's right, Ash. <clears throat> well, well, if it isn't Reen again. Don't worry about Ash. I'm glad for the chance just to be able to talk like this with someone my own age. Hear that? I got the okay. Straight from the Imperial family. <laughs> Even so, you need to be more respectful. Like I said, don't worry. It's fine. Anyway, I assume you're here to give me your reply about your upcoming dance with the sister? What did you just say? <laughs> For real? Eh, it was a sort of last minute sort of thing. So the rumors were true after all. Well, no matter. If you're dancing with the princess, then I'll be able to dance with Elise. Oh, so you still have eyes on her, huh? Dance with Elise? What exactly makes you think you can do that? Why do you always make that same terrifying smile? <sighs> yep, listen, listen, listen. You brought up Elise. You should know by now that Big Brother Bear is gonna come out to play. Still, it is entertaining nonetheless. Thank you for all the equipment you provided to the branch campus, Chairman Arena. At least has been such a big help, too. We really can't thank the RF company enough. Well, my daughter aside, the ports you've been sending us has been just as helpful. And Emma, I'd like to thank you for all the data you provide on the Orville staff. Oh, it was no trouble at all. Thank you for letting me use it. There really is a lot of talent here at this party tonight. If either of you have any complaints about your current positions, just let me know. I'll have positions at RF worthy of your talent prepared in an instant. That's so nice of you to offer, but I'm happy where I am right now. And yes, so am I. <laughs> She's still in recruitment mode. <laughs> listen, listen, this businesswoman... Again, you should know the screen. This businesswoman does not sleep. I'm pretty sure that if it wasn't for Sharon, she wouldn't sleep at all. Like, I, I can absolutely see Sharon putting her, like, demanding that she rest. Even if she's just, even if it's a matter of being nagged. Nagged until she can't work anymore and has to. I can see that totally being the case. Hey, Waryuna and Altina. Talking with Major Claire, I see. Instructor. <laughs> well, hello there. You've been bouncing between all the different charts and chats the whole night, Instructor. Gee, thanks, I think? Well, a chance to talk with all these different people doesn't come often. I need to make the most of it. I remember that you and knew Claire from before, but had you met her before the start of the school year? School year, Altina? She often looked after Milliam and me when we were on joint missions. We haven't had a good chance to talk with each other like this since back when I was still at the police academy. She really helped me a lot back then. Oh, you know, it was nothing. What precisely did the Major help with? If you're comfortable sharing it with us. <laughs> well, it's old news by now. It just happened at the end of last year. After Lloyd was branded a criminal, I started protest protesting to the military police HQ. But the new head of the department was from Erebonia, and he revoked all the academic credits I'd gained. Ooh, dick move. For protesting? Could he even do that? Such actions were beyond his right and unfounded. Precisely, I felt it was completely uncalled for, so I stepped in. Unfortunately, we weren't able to get all her units back. But I managed to get about half of them reinstated, and I reached an agreement where I'd be able to get the other half by attending a different school. So that's how she ended up at Thor's. Yep. Correct. Thought it would benefit her more than simply retaking the same classes at the Military Police Academy. <clears throat> I heard a new Class 7 was going to be formed, so I recommended her to the branch campus. Wow, I had no idea. I was pretty ticked off at the time, but I feel everything worked out for the best. If I continued on at the police academy and joined the military police, I probably would have exploded from stress. I don't think that means I was happy being in your class or anything. <laughs> oh yeah? That's a shame. <laughs> Does this mean you're leaving us once you get your units? Oh. Well. That's true, I wonder. 
After going through all that just to get here, there's no way I'm going to just up and leave you guys. There's so many things I want to do here now. Besides, I need to stick around and look after you, Allie. Well, as far as schoolwork is concerned, I'm the one who looks after you. <laughs> Oof, shots fired. Glad you found such a good place for yourself, Yuna. Ah, the Nordmen. It does make sense that they would all end up talking together. I didn't expect I'd get the chance to speak with you, Brigadier General. Black Roland of Sutherland himself. Last time I saw you, you was in the final battle of the Civil War. Good to see you two again, General. It was a real shame the Infernal Castle got in our way. Would have liked to have chance to test myself against the legendary 4th Armor Division. It would have been an armor to even slow you down. Ha <laughs> ha Quid, you're joking. Between your prowess and piloting a Panzer Soldat and your spear skills, you'd have done a lot more than slow us down. Those Nord spear techniques are really something else. Are you trained in them as well by chance? Why, yes, I am. I want to hear the skills of Vardius family are even more polished. Thanks to my family having lived in Arbonia so long, we've incorporated a certain aspect of Imperial spear techniques into our style. We've got a bit of the cell. Uh, such. Such laden? The Vanderstall and even a few techniques from the Eisenritter mixed in. Whoa! Now I'm actually a little jealous of the pure Nord style you use. <laughs> well, to be honest, my style isn't completely Nord these days. All this talk of styles. I only ever trained in the 100 form military combat they taught us the military academy. I'm jealous of the both of you for being able to discuss martial arts with such depth. You're a master of combat in your own way, General. Speaking of the military combat style, I hear has been going through a number of changes lately on account for soldier, on account for Panzer Soldats. I'm sure your right hand man is quite the pilot. Neinhardt? He's one of the best, of course. <laughs> yeah, he is tough. I fought him. But even then, I doubt he'd ever be a match for you, Brigadier General. Oh. I don't remember Neinhardt being a spearman. I thought he was a swordsman. Maybe General Vandick would be a better sparring partner. I uh, I think I'll leave him to Lady Alaria. <laughs> yeah, he might Vander might be old, but damn, is he terrifying! Looking at them now, you wouldn't know those two men met on the field of battle at the end of the Civil War. Now that I think about it, guys is acquainted with both of them. Oh, that's right. I, that's right. General Craig isn't. He's from Arbonia. I guess he just. So casually fits in with them all, I forgot about it. He knows General Craig through Elliot, and from what I've heard, Guys and Brigadier General Bardius were both taught by that one traveling priest. Alright, so we're gonna talk to the girls again? It's an honor to be able to see with you, Your Highness. My name is Nuse Egret. I apologize for not being able to meet with you before now. <laughs> well, that's not quite true. I remember you visiting the palace about 13 years ago when your parents were still alive. The two of us first met back then. <laughs> it was then you first met Alfin, too. I remember the two of you playing and laughing. I, I had no idea. Now that you mention it, I have a few fuzzy memories. I think I was about four at the time. So she must have been three. At the time, I never could have guessed what was going to happen to your parents. These words might be far too late, but my heart goes out to you for your loss. No, I appreciate it. Thank you for your kind words. Guess this is the first time they were able to talk like this. But if her parents came to visit the palace, that must mean... Introducing yourself to the Empress Museum? Why, yes, I've lived in Heimdall for some time now, but I've never had the chance to speak with her. Glad I was able to put one of my regrets to rest. I'm sorry it took so long, Muse. Mother had been actually been asking me to set up a meeting with you for a little while. But with everything that's happened, I'm glad you were able to finally speak, though. Thank you, Alvin. Yes, Muse's circumstances are more complicated than I thought. But I'm glad to hear she has the Empress and Prince Alvin looking out for her. Oh, so it's Rectorine. Are there any Church of the Rumors you'll be dancing with the Princess later this evening? Um, 
I suppose Cedric has been planning for that, but... Well, I did ask before, I'm sure now it will be a bit difficult for you to accept, Reen. I explained things to Cedric, so everything should be fine now, and... Um... Is it still happening regardless? I'm sure it's just a misunderstanding, but... Reen told the conversation he had with Cedric earlier. He did what?! He's still going ahead with this behind my back? <laughs> I suppose being set in stone little by little. I'm sure the two of you will look great together, but I can't help but feeling a little bit jealous. And poor Elise. Yes, that's what's been bothering me the most. Huh? What does Elise have to do with this? What? What? Oh no. <laughs> uh, anyway, you say please lend me your help. Through the insidious of mine, you guys can come up with a plan. That's quite a way to ask for help, but I accept. After all, how could I say no to helping both my Elise and my dearest instructor? Oh no. They've got off in their own little world. <sighs> pat, pat. Reen, you poor bastard, you never stood a chance. <laughs> I should start mentally preparing for the dance. Yep, you're, it's hopeless, dude. Just, you're toast. That's all that matters. <laughs> I heard Muse was one of your students. I'm truly happy I was able to get the chance to speak with her. I'm not too familiar with everything that's happening over in La Mer. I get the feeling she has some complicated circumstances there. I'm sure she'll be able to tell you about it eventually, one way or another. I seem to be surrounded by so many tragic stories, such as Oliver's past. The way he lost his mother was truly heartbreaking. That's right. I've heard the rumors, like how she was born a commoner. Yes. She was the one the Emperor was truly in love with. Yeah, I forgot about that Empress Priscilla was the second wife. I remember it vividly. I was a humble maid back then. It looked far from Heimdall, and he was always trying to find ways to get her to live in the palace with him. That's... it's okay for me to be hearing about this? Oh, it's fine. Nearly everyone here at the palace knows already. However, after she passed, he accepted the throne and ended up choosing someone from a small noble house to be his wife. Me. We went through some troubles, but eventually, Oliver began living with us, and I was blessed with my daughter and son. Wait, so if she... She was a maid? That's interesting. So she was from a noble house, but she was still a maid? Must have been uh, pretty rough for her house. Maybe a lower? His Majesty had given Alpha and Cedric his whole heart as their father, but... Osborne. I'm sorry, I shouldn't be discussing such things. No, it's fine. Prince Alfred as the Party City Hall is hosting tonight, right? He's there representing the Imperial family. Oh, I see. It's a very clever political move. Things will begin to change for the better here in the palace, and for the Banner family, too. Yes, I hope for that, too. I didn't even think of it at first. It's clever. Very clever. Maki is Kurt and Fritz. What are you three talking about? We're discussing Jess. Would you care to join in? Oh, that makes sense, now that I think about it. <clears throat> All you chess addicts. It was an only natural in a matter of time before they found each other. I had no idea Machias was in the chess club. To have entered that tournament, he must be really skilled. Oh, you were in a tournament? Yeah, there was an amateur chess tournament going on the other day. I happened to have the day off, so I figured it might be fun. But I ended up losing in the semifinals. Oh, wow. Even getting to the semifinals is impressive on its own. I agree. Even though it was for amateurs, the people who place high in those tournaments are often just as good as some pros. Would you mind telling us more about it? Sure thing. It's always nice to see people bond over shared hobbies. It's true. Hello, you two. Seems like you're talking about something interesting. We were in the middle of discussing military technology in recent years. There's no stopping the march of progress. We've got weapons today that people couldn't even have dreamed of just a decade ago. That's true. Panzer soldats, the colossal archaisms, even the railway cannons. Not to mention, certain countries almost have full-functioning orbital networks. 
soon enough we might even get to the point where even bracers will need to know how to use orbital terminal. Hmm. If you can't use an orbital terminal, then the future will be blank for you. How do you mean? Technological advancements in the recent years are due to the development of high-level orbital arithmetic logic units. The orbital network connects to these. As more and more are linked, the possibilities become endless. This new technology is far more advanced than anything that came before. In fact, I'd go so far as to say we're living through the second orbital revolution. No kidding. You're saying this is happening as we speak, then? Well, that sounds like quite the fascinating little chat. Hmm? Oh. Hey, Lecter. So there you are. Yeah, I was off doing a few patrols on the palace. Seemed like it's the palace is secure enough. Oof, all that walking really worked up an appetite. I'm about to be all over this buffet. By the time I'm done, it'll probably be all over me, too. <laughs> nom, 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 nom. With the way you act, no one would even know you're a major. Oh, yeah? I was progressing on those rom Professor. Right, those were the battle ornaments that Calvarian agents were using. <laughs> Don't be impatient. I've only just begun the analysis. From my first look at them, though, I can tell they're excellently made. The most noteworthy quality so far is that they will only function when activated by their owners. Huh. What, are they, uh... A DNA? Locked or something? Thus far, all we've gotten from our analysis have been reams of junk data. Well, maybe they can use the unique qualities of each person's spirit as a key of a kind of key. A person's spirit is definitely something you can't just crank out a copy of. Could be they've got a completely secure system. Probably it's a, call it a spirit code or something like that. How how do you know all this? I don't know a thing. I'm just pulling all this from the usual place. Those were just guesses? You need to give a logical explanation to support your hypothesis. Like you was telling me is about intuition earlier today, but Sheesh, these two. Yep. Like a bucket of vinegar and a pile of baking soda. This will probably go on for a while. Let's just let them fight it out. I don't know if that's the best option. <laughs> Excuse me. Are you Miss Elisa Reinford of the RF Group? You're one of the members of the Class 7, right? The one who saved Cedric's life in the Civil War? And now you're di that director of the 4th Developmental Division? I saw the interview you had with the Imperial Chronicle. It was so inspiring. My name is Ada Grant. I'm coming class 1 at Thor's main campus, and it's really an honor to meet you. Aw, that's really flattering. Thank you. I'm happy to meet you too, Ada. I think you might be overselling me a bit, though. <laughs> There's no need to be aw, so modest of Lisa. You really are an incredible woman. Exactly. It's one of my goals to even be half as lovely and skilled as you are. <laughs> wow. From what I hear, you're pretty skilled already. You've got the second place at the midterm exams out of both Thor's campuses and combined, right? Both are just great. When I think about everything you and your class has accomplished, scoring high on tests and on a test seems so insignificant. Nonsense. You should never devalue your own hard work. <laughs> Maybe you should come work for me after you graduate. <laughs> just kidding. Uh, oh, um. I think you stunned her into silence. Uh, sorry, I haven't decided what to do after I graduate. Don't stress over it. Just keep in mind as one of your potential choices. I will. Thank you so much. Looks <laughs> like Elisa's in recruitment mode, too. <laughs> well, like mother, like daughter, right? Eddie seems to know about a lot Class 7. I wonder if that's the reason she enrolled in Thor's in the first place. Because of the first structuring of the main campus this year, we students are being strongly encouraged to get jobs with the military or government. I've been agonizing over what I should do even before I enrolled at Thor's. I actually considered going to St. Austria Aust at one point. You don't say? Yes, I know Princess Elfin was attending the school and I thought I might be able to find a path to follow there. But then I heard about a heroic group of students from Thor's fighting in the Civil War. That's what led to my decision. Happy to hear we were able to inspire you like that. I hope she can carry on the Thor spirit just like you did. I suppose no matter what school you ended up choosing, you would have been able to meet someone from the Imperial family. <laughs> I almost wish we could have gone to school together, but of course we can still be friends now. I look forward to seeing more of you in the future, Rita. Yes, so do I. She may not be related to Instructor Reen by blood, but she's just as wonderful a person as he is. 
Is everything all right? Uh, yeah, no, yeah, yes. It's all right, it's nothing. <laughs> Looks to me like you're still agonizing over what to do after graduation. No, it was something else. Or, I mean, <clears throat> happy to see the three of them getting along so well. Thinking over this, is, they call this a garden. I, I I feel like garden doesn't even really close, come close. Hey, my man Elliot. Whew. I think I finally met with everyone I needed to. I'm glad you can take a little rest now. Must be tough being head of one of the four great houses. Why do you even need to do all this boring stuff? Just set loose. This is supposed to be a party. It's not that simple. Or I could just let loose here, it would create problems in the future. I will do everything I can to fulfill my duty as head of House Alborea. Hey now, if you're proud to get any more fraud, your head's gonna crack like an egg. <laughs> Let me give you a face massage. I'll get you nice and unfroed in no time. <laughs> no, you won't. Why does this sort of thing always happen with you? Do you even realize the problems I would cause here? Besides, you're a young lady now, and so... Gotcha. <laughs> Some things never change. <laughs> oh, you two. You guys sure are having fun. These two never change, do they? But, hmm. What's wrong? Maybe I'm just reading too much into it, but it does seem like Eustace and Millium are always together these days. Do you think maybe? Quit hanging on you like that. Nope. <laughs> Scratch that thought. <laughs> Yeah, I'd say they have more like a brother and sister that like, get along really well. Um, coming from you, Rain, I'm not quite sure how to take that. <laughs> <sighs> it's funny because everybody else can see it but me. And when it comes to that, I'm oblivious and as blind as a bat. Alright, let's try this one more time. And so the party continued with Rain never getting an opening to talk to the Chancellor. With the party in full swing, people began to gather at the center of the garden. Ah, dance time. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your patience. To start us off, my sister Alfin will have the first dance. The way I hear it, people all across the Empire have been awaiting this moment for years. Man, she has got super long hair. Has she ever cut her hair? Like me, she is now 17 years old, and this dance will serve as her debut into high society. Her first dance partner shall be a certain instructor at Thor's Military Academy. None other than the Ashen Chevalier, Reen Schwarzer. Oh. Hmm. So the news the princess is. I hear he's only the son of a baron, but I suppose it's okay these days. He seems to carry himself well. And the rumors. Sure enough. Yeah, there have been rumors going around like wildfire. It's a huge honor, I guess. Um, yes. Lisa's jealous. He shall be the princess's first. Oh. Sounds dirty. <laughs> yeah, right. That That's way. what I was going. Fee? <laughs> it's true, though. Fee has the. Classy, guys. <laughs> He was drowning in fame before, and now everyone's talking like him and the princess are already married. <laughs> yeah, seems like everyone's reading way too much into well, this. Well, that's how it is in high well, society. To some degree, yes. <laughs> However, will this play out, I wonder? Is Musei just... I suppose this is... Musei just waiting for the scandal, I suppose. Listen, listen, listen. This is as much a prank on Elise as anything else. See? D 
To tell the truth, I'm actually already acquainted with Mr. Reem Oh no, she's, do she's digging it deeper. <clears throat> Let's see what route she takes with this. I mean, Alfin was kidding. He's the older brother of my dearest friend. Allow me to introduce Elise Schwarzer. She is the student council president at St. Astraea Girls School. Princess? I don't know, Alfin. Oh, you little troublemaker. And she will be making her debut into high society alongside me tonight. Reen will choose which of us he dances with. Whoever he chooses, there will be no hard feelings. Oh man, am I actually going to pick? <laughs> Very well played, princess. So this is the scheme oh, they came up with. What an adorable workaround. She really is something else. It looks like uh, her brother isn't the only political savvy one member of the family. <laughs> You're a real lifesaver. I will respectfully take both the hand of my sister and her best friend, the princess. It might be a bit unorthodox, but please, allow us Schwarzer siblings Ooh. to have the first dance. Oh, that was indeed a, a brilliant workaround. So she wasn't trying to dig the hole deeper. She was trying successfully, not trying, she actually did. She actually managed to make the save. <laughs> I wonder whose idea this was. My word. Can one man truly be this lucky? <laughs> <laughs> lucky enough to dodge that uh, That's what I'm mean. saying, Marcus. Yes. Had he danced with the princess first, the whole city would be planning their honeymoon by now. Right. However, since he and his sister danced first, that ship has sailed, as it were. <laughs> oh, Alfin. That ashen chevalier is certainly quite the man. Wouldn't you agree? Huh. <laughs> You can thank Baron Schwarzer for raising him that way. So yeah, hmm. the Emperor knows. Uh, I mean, I would expect him to. Now, all you young people here with us, follow their lead and enjoy yourselves. The Summer Festival's blue moon shines on us this night. I am certain the spirits are especially riled. So, let us give them a show. Of course, I would be dancing with Lisa. <clears throat> Given that Machias and Emma scored the highest on their test, it does make a certain sense to me. Unless, of course, we're just switching it up. Ash and Muse. That's a devious combination right there. Sharon's always a good choice. So yeah, we're just, yeah, at this point, we're just sort of swapping partners in and out. My apologies for arriving so late. Oh, wasn't expecting Oliver. No, uh, Rufus. 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 Even more. Ah, so good to see you. Hmm. Is that Governor General Rufus? Fashionably late as always, huh? I didn't know he was coming. Did any <laughs> of us? It seems you've stolen the spotlight all to yourself. To tell the truth, I was at a party held by the Imperial Household Agency. I wished to greet His Highness Oliver, Governor Regnitz, Lord Rogner, and Viscount Arsade before making my way here. I see. Thank you for your courtesy. The night is yet young, and the party has only just begun. Bring out more food and drinks. Please continue to enjoy yourselves, by all means.
You, sis, come with me. Let us catch up, my dear brother. Hmm. Machia, Elisa, Elliot, and Laura as well. Join us. I'm sure we've much to talk about. Oh, yes, considering your position in the Civil War. <laughs> in that case, I shall call upon Ms. Valestine and Ms. Herschel. Come, allow me to introduce you to the Empress. What's this about all of a sudden? Yep, yeah, this isn't just pleasantries. We're uh, talking I business. I don't know. There's no way we can refuse. Why just us, though? Does it have something to do with our families? It's very possible. Yeah, that's what it looks like. And yeah, you've been specifically singled out. May as well get going then. Good luck. Um, I suppose I'll go. Oh, I know. I wonder what they're talking I'm about. I'm going to bet 20 bucks says that Osborne has his eye on Toa for the Iron Bloods. Think we should follow? Yeah. Reen! Oh, Claire! What's wrong? Well, this may come as a surprise, but a certain someone would like to speak with you. Hmm. You mean the someone who just left, perhaps? Yeah. Understood. I'll be going, everyone. Yes. Indeed. Good luck. Try not to be too nervous. Rain? Wait. I thought they were talking about Rufus. Are they talking about Alvin? Instructor? Huh. Yep. Enough of the pleasantries, I'm afraid. Just about to get serious. Just go straight to the end of the hall, then make a right. Head to the farthest room. Oh, she's following me. That's pretty cool. She even dashes. Nice. I'm impressed by the tracking. That's really good. Head to the farthest room. It's luxurious. It's a sizable lounge for palace guests. Sizable indeed. This is the bathroom. Just in case you need to pee. I mean, it makes sense given all all the drinks and alcohol. There's the back room. Whoa. Yes, let's go. It's the princess's room. Greetings, His Majesty. Oh. Oh, it's the Emperor. Serene Schwarzer has arrived. I'm a sir now? Very good. See him in. Apologize for calling you here like this, Instructor Schwarzer. No, it's an honor to have an audience with the Emperor. Your dances with your sister and Alfin were a sight to behold. Is he wanting to talk matchmaking? Is that your skills as a lead were just as impressive as the rumor suggested? I'm sure my daughter was very happy. <laughs> um. Well, <laughs> I don't think this is what. Yep, yeah, this is definitely a curveball. <laughs> I'm oh. only joking. You've helped out Oliver numerous times. You've rescued Alfin twice. And you saved Cedric's life at the end of the Civil War. Yep, I remember that at the cost of crows. My entire family is grateful for everything you and the rest of Class 7 have done. Now crows back somehow. Oh, yeah, right, right, right. The Forbidden Magic. As the Awakener of the Ashen Knight, the very same one my ancestor once piloted. You have saved many lives and averted many crises. So you knew the truth about Emperor Dreykel's? Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. As well as the relationship between yep. the Chancellor and yourself. That's no surprise. Dude, he's the Emperor. Come on. You know that, too? Yes, I figured it out somewhere along the way. I see. 
When I asked, the Chancellor didn't deny it. So I took that to mean my suspicions were correct. I see. He and I have much in Looks common. Looks like the Osborne isn't the only shrewd politician at the head of the government. Both of us have lost loved ones to the foolish schemes of others. Is that how his first wife died? I've heard about the Chancellor, but your highness? It happened long ago. Have you perhaps heard anything regarding Oliver's I knew it. I may have heard a rumor once. Apparently she was a commoner, passed but she passed away tragically. Was it Os- no, it wasn't Osborne's scheme that did it? The two of us enrolled in Thor's in the same year. She was a commoner, but her intelligence, grace, and bright smile were anything but common. We'd fight at times, but eventually we fell in love. The both of us were young, we became involved with the other. She ended up dropping out of school and returned to her hometown. Then, by some time later, I found she had given birth to a boy. That boy was Oliver. Aw, oh, she is beautiful. And Oliver's adorable. I was still crown prince at the time. I wanted to make her my empress, but she refused. I was at least able to send one of the Vanders to guard her. My father and one of the my father and the lords of the four great houses had been pestering me to get married for years, but I held out hope she'd change her mind. However, with my father still ill, a group of Jaegers seeking favor with one of the four great houses attacked her and Oliver. The eldest son of the Vander family managed to save Oliver, but she lost her life. Wait, so they were never actually married? My father passed on. I had lost her. I welcomed Oliver as the one ray of light left in my life and officially announced he was my son. Shortly thereafter, I married to ensure this tragedy would not repeat itself. She was the daughter of a small noble family working as a maid. Yep, Priscilla accepted my courtship, despite knowing that my heart still belonged to my first love. Wow, I kind of cast Priscilla in an even more incredible light. Oliver seemed intent on walling himself off from everyone in the palace, but Priscilla was able to get him to open up. He finally accepted me as his father, and when the twins were born, he was just as happy as the rest of us, if not more so. And so, that is the messy history of the current Imperial family. I had no idea. But are you sure it's alright to tell me all this? I mean, he is the Emperor. It's no great secret. Most of the larger noble families already know. But my point is this. Both the Chancellor and I lost loved ones. But our sons yet live. Certainly a unique point of commonality, wouldn't you say? I feel like he's trying to offer me something. That's true. Is that why you appointed him as Imperial Chancellor? It's true that I felt an affinity with him. However, the most important factor was his negotiation of the ceasefire with Liberal. The events of Hama yeah, wounded Hama. my heart deeply. But I knew I could not allow them to be made public. Well, that makes me feel a little bit better. Because Osborne, and given his position within the Empire, to, by default, kind of come, has the Emperor coming across as callous and heartless as well. But hearing it straight from him, I mean, I suppose he could be lying, but it does make me feel a little bit better. He managed to get both the Four Great Houses and Liberal to concede to his terms and put the Hundred Days War to an end. And so rose the first common-born Imperial Chancellor. Now I understand. But in the 13 years since he became Chancellor, a lot has changed. The nobles have lost power, while he's only gotten stronger. He's using that power to steer Erebonia in a dangerous direction. Indeed. With all due respect, I don't think it's right to sit back and let him continue. Oh, that's bold. I understand your concern. Oliver's as well. Oliver is more concerned for his brother and sister's futures than anyone. In that respect, he sees the Chancellor as a bigger threat than the Yeah, yeah, it's fair. I mean, he's... Chancellor uh, Osborne's been gathering more and more power for himself. However, things are not so simple. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. This is politics, after all. Regarding myself and the Chancellor, tragedies like Hamel, 
At times, this nation will make the most tragically foolish decisions. During the War of the Lions, the brothers of the royal family spilled each other's blood and pulled the nation into their feud. Mm -hmm. The history of Erebonia is smeared with blood and alight with flames. More than any other country. Yeah. Th that's... He's right. Deception is an important tool in politics and war. But the thought of killing your own people as an excuse to invade another country... Yeah. As a teacher of history, I'm sure you have your own thoughts on this matter. So tell me. Do you know the people of Erebonia to have a cruel temperament? No. The people of Erebonia are sincere and value honor and pride. They think highly of martial skill, but know it is a virtue to use it only when absolutely necessary. The incidents you spoke of, it's almost as though a devil had been whispering in their ear. What, do you, so does he think Ouroboros or the Black Workshop? Precisely. There is something in Erebonia. Ooh, I something like this twist. People's minds and steers them toward chaos. Uh, yeah, just like the uh, the night touched, or the the zombies. Perhaps it could be called a curse, one that has been with us since the founding of this nation. Since the founding of the nation, perhaps it has. So yeah, it probably has something to do with the pomographs, or perhaps the divine knights themselves. If you've read the black records. You may have some idea what I speak of. The, the Black Records? Well, I don't think I've ever been able to read them. It would seem the Church is seeking them out. But the original writings are in the Imperial family's possession. Only those who succeed the throne are permitted to read them. They are records of the truth of this nation's history. And a prophecy now I gotta go back. of its future. I can read them. An inevitable future, no doubt. I'm certain any attempts to avoid it will only cause things to become further warped and twisted. That is one of the reasons I am not putting a stop to the Chancellor's actions. Hmm. So by attempting to make things better, you ultimately make things worse. Sure, I don't know all the details, but... I, it's begrudging, but I gotta admit, it makes sense. Both the Chancellor and His Highness understand the situation fully. Yet they... And so... I plan to not avert my eyes, and watch to the end. Huh? As the ruler of Erebonia, the Empire mired in darkness and founded under a curse, I shall watch my sons, the Crimson Wings, the new light of the nobility, and Class Seven, both old and new, to see if any of them can overcome the iron will of the Chancellor and light the way to a new path for this nation. Oh. <sighs> I see. Charging me with the old motto of the school. I promise to give everything I have to find this new path. Not just as a member of Class 7. Oh, rise, rise, oh you then become the foundation of the world. But on behalf of Thor's Military Academy and all its students and graduates. <laughs> You're aware that would include both myself and the Chancellor, yes? But all the same, well said. Oh, that was, some, that was a heavy-ass meeting, damn. Ooh. Welcome back. I'm not sure what you two spoke about, but I trust it was well worth the time? Yes, most definitely. Precisely. There is something in Erebonia. Something which bends people's minds and steers them toward chaos. Reen. Hmm. It's nothing. Um, Major, can I ask you something? Finished with your chat? Your Excellency. It would appear you want no need to speak with me about something. Ah, I see he noticed that. I can't take too much time out of my schedule, but I have a room prepared. Shall we? Huh.
Yes, let's go. All right, we're not even done yet. Ooh. <clears throat> Damn, I was not expecting this. Holy crap. Maybe we'll get some. Hmm? Where are you headed, Ash? Why is Ash snooping about? Eh, I gotta take a piss. Wanna join me? I think I'll pass. <laughs> But let me say this. Don't so much as think about sneaking out. Too late. Ash, you're gonna get your ass in trouble, dude. I admit it's a bit nerve-wracking, but this truly is a special event. Yeah, like, super special. We should all enjoy it together as Class 7. Who would have guessed the pretty boy was just as big of a nag as that wild filly? <laughs> Maybe somewhere along the line, I'll let those guys get to me. I mean, it happens. Oh, is something the matter, sir? Busted. Oh, yeah, I was just on my way back from the bathroom, but... I noticed something strange. Something strange, sir? Yeah, it's just around the corner here. Lights out. <laughs> 